What's happening everyone? In this video I'll be introducing the idea of a dictionary in Python. The dictionary is a very powerful object in Python and is, in my opinion at least, one of the most important reasons to use the Python coding language. Um, the dictionary class is built into the Python language itself, meaning you don't have to add any import statements to access any of its features. On top of that, the dictionary implementation is super simple to use and lends itself to numerous applications. In the beginning of this video, I'll show you guys the basics of the class, and towards the end, I'll set up an example uh, to showcase the performance benefits of, in this case, using a dictionary over a list object. If you'd like to see another video tutorial covering lists, post a comment below. I'm thinking this could be the first in a series of videos covering the basic objects to use in Python, so stay tuned for that. So, to start off with, a dictionary is basically a mapping from a string or an integer to an object. The string or integer used as the input is known as the key, over here on the left, and the object return is known as the value, over here on the right. Together we can think of the key and the value as a pair mapping, where the key maps directly to the value, but not the other way around. The dictionary has no necessary ordering to itself, which is strange to hear if you're used to using Python lists or arrays in other languages. Recall that in a list you provide an index, which is a number, and I'll return the object at that certain index. We can normally think of an array, or at least a list to some degree, as being a solid block in memory in the computer, and we can only access its elements by providing the address of the element we wish to withdraw. The dictionary, on the other hand, is more attuned to a hash map or function. I'm not going to delve too deep into the underlying functionality of the dictionary, but suffice to say it basically takes an input, uh, the string or integer, and perform some calculation using this as the input to figure out where in memory to access to retrieve the object we desire to pull out. So I'll start up the uh, Python interpreter here and give you guys an idea of the basics of the dictionary itself. Um, we can declare a dictionary in Python using curly brackets. So for example, this will create a uh, new dictionary uh, with no contents um, called D. Uh, notice it's, it's somewhat similar to the way you would initialize a list if you guys have any experience with that. Uh, but don't get confused when I'm going through creating dictionaries. Um, but you can always know when you're using curly braces it, it's a dictionary and not a list. Um, so this will create our empty dictionary. Now uh, we can add in, proceed to add some elements to it. Um, so for example we could create a key called 1 and then set that to a value of yes and create a key with the string of one and set that equal to no. And now we can access these elements in a pretty similar fashion. Um, so notice how Python treats the, the string and the integer representations uh, separately. So we can store something at the integer of one that's different than what we store at the string of one. Um, and this is basically because, uh, recall that the key is transformed into a number, and then that number is used to calculate the memory address uh, of where the value is stored. So when you have 1, that's going to be a pretty simple conversion into binary. You're just going to have uh, a 1. And uh, conversely, though, when you have a string 1, this is probably going to be converted into something like ASCII format and then that hex value is going to be used as the input to the function to figure out where to access the element in memory. Um, and like I was saying, we can also uh, pretty much set any object to be the value uh, in Python. So we could do something as simple as an integer. So I'll just do 2 is equal to 9000 and then obviously we can call that back. Um, and we can also create a, a simple class and then just use that as the value as well. So then that would make it so that you can add stuff later on in your code, um, add in certain things into that object, and then be able to kind of add functionality after the fact, even if you've already created a bunch of functions. Uh, so we can just create a simple class here. So now we have our... Uh, the body of our class, my class, and we can create an instance of that. Uh, call it instance is equal to my class. 
and now we can use uh, that instance as the value in the key value pair. So we could do object is equal to instance. So now if we want to, we could access the, uh, the data point that's inside of that, as simple as this. If we wish to iterate over the elements of the dictionary, we can use either the keys function or the items function. And as you can see, the keys function returns all of the keys in a list uh, that we've assigned to the dictionary, uh, whereas the items function will return a list of tuples, where each tuple is a key value pair. Um, so for example, if you wanted to um, iterate over the keys, it would be as simple as writing for key in d.keys, and then you would obviously continue your for loop. Um, an easy way to do it with the items function would be for key comma value in d.items, then continue your for loop. And as always in Python, um, we can view the contents of our dictionary simply by using the print function. So keep in mind that when you're iterating over elements in the dictionary, uh, there's no reason to believe that they will be sorted in any fashion at all. Um, even in terms of the order that you assign the values inside the dictionary. So just because we did uh, one, we assigned one before we assigned the string of one, that doesn't mean when we call the keys or the items function that one will be before string of one. As, as we can see here, uh, string of one is actually before one. Um, so just keep that in mind. You can't assume that there's going to be any sort of ordering, and that's what you lose when you switch over from a list to a a dictionary is that you don't have that structured data type. So now I'll exit out of the interpreter and switch over to a, uh, a coding editor so I can show you guys the performance uh, benchmark that I've created. The main idea of our uh, performance benchmark is that we're going to be creating a data set uh, using this create data set function um, wherein we're going to be uh, opening up a file called data.txt. We're going to be writing to it. Um, and we're going to be writing in num entries entries into that uh, text file. In this case, we're going to be using 5 million. Um, the scale of this will change the, uh, the scale of the difference between the performance of the list and the performance of the dictionary. Uh, very simply, we're going to be obviously iterating over a number of entries. And then at each iteration, we're going to be choosing a random selection from this list of names. So we have the names Jack, Bob, Mary, Jeff, Anne, Pierre, Martha, Klaus, Pablo, Suzanne, and Gustav. Um, on each iteration, we're going to be choosing one of those names randomly and writing it to the file along with an end line. So each line in the file is going to have one of these 10 names randomly selected. Um, the way in which we're going to be comparing the dictionary to the list is that we're going to be opening up um, our data.txt file uh, in both of these cases. And then, so for example, I'll go through the list here. Um, we're going to be creating a list that's the same length as class names uh, called class counts. We're going to be opening the file and then uh, iterating over each line right here. And if uh, the line's not equal to nothing, so basically we're just checking to make sure that this isn't the last line in the file. Um, we're going to be finding the index of the name that's on that line in the class names list and then increment, incrementing our class counts list at that index. So effectively we're going to have at the end of this read dataset list function we're going to have another list called class counts and at the zeroth index for example we're going to have the number of counts of Jack. At the first index we're going to have the number of counts of Bob all the way down to Gustav at the ninth index. Um, and then pretty much the same idea <clears throat> is seen in our uh, dictionary version of the function, except obviously we're going to be using a dictionary to keep count of the names that we encounter. Um, so here we're going to be creating our class counts dictionary, and then iterating over each one of the class names, and then setting, or we're going to be using each one of the names as a key, and then the value and the key value pair is going to be equal to zero. So we're going to have another dictionary with 10 items in it because there's 10 names and then each one of those uh, values for each one of those keys is just going to be equal to zero. And then 
once again here we're going to be opening up the file, iterating over the file, and then every time we encounter a name we're going to be incrementing the uh, integer at that uh, key value pair in the dictionary. Um, and so we can, we'll be able to see, comparing these two methods of reading the, uh, the data set, we'll, we should be able to see that the dictionary is significantly faster than the list. Um, I'll, I'm going to open up the file here just to give you guys a better idea of what we're going to be looking at. Um, as you can see, I've already run this uh, to create the data set, and it turns out it's 28.6 megabytes. We can open it up in uh, a text editor here. We can see it's basically just, uh, like I was saying, each, each line is just a name, one of the randomized names from this list of 10 names. And then below these functions here, I'll just collapse these, make it easier to read. Um, we've got our time benchmarking. We can actually get rid of this part here because we already created the data set. Um, so first we're going to be calling the read data set list function, timing that, and then reporting the time. And then we'll be calling our read data set dictionary function, um, timing that, and then reporting the time. So we can try to run this and see what kind of results we get. Okay, perfect. So, in the case of the list, it took us 1.4 seconds to read through and document all the uh, counts of the uh, names we encountered. And then, whereas for the dictionary, it only took us 0 0.8 seconds. Um, this may not seem like a big difference, but um, I can tell you that if we had more names in the list of names, so if we had 100 names in this list, then there would be a drastically different uh, delta, time delta, between the uh, dictionary and the list implementation. Um, because if you think about it, in the list function, every time we encounter a name on, on the, uh, in the file, first thing we have to do is find the index of that name in the class names list. Um, before we can even increase the m amount of uh, counts we found, we have to figure out what index that name is at. And then, so, as opposed to in the dictionary function, all we have to do is perform the, uh, the simple lookup of where that address is in memory and then increment that. Um, so you can kind of see here, uh, accessing elements in a dictionary in Python is basically big O of 1 in terms of uh, the accessing complexity, time complexity of it. Uh, whereas uh, the list implementation would be somewhere on the order of O of n over 2, uh, so just O of n, because you don't really know. You could be accessing the last element in the list every single time, so you're going to have to iterate over 10 elements every time you want to just figure out where you want to increment. Um, so I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed it, definitely give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, uh, definitely subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for those. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video.